Hello everyone, I just wanted to let you know how much I miss having you in class and I cannot wait to see your faces again and talk to you and see your art in person. But for now, I have another lesson for you guys. We are going to look at how artists see rain. This is what our project is going to look like. We're, we are going to draw a little bit of a person and then we're gonna fold some paper to make an umbrella and we'll add some rain. So your learning targets are, one, I can fold paper into an umbrella shape, and then two, I can create a rain scene. So in this rain project, we are going to be creation enjoyers because we're gonna look at how God, who is the ultimate artist, created rain in his art, and we are going to look at his rain and make our own art. Um, so before we do that, let's look at a few other artists who have done rain paintings. This one's kind of a crazy one. This is by Louisa Chase in Clouds and Rain. We have this one by Charles Birchfield. It's kind of a scary one. It's a little dark and gloomy, and it looks like the thunder is rolling. This one's kind of a crazy one. It's by Kandinsky. He loved bright colors and lots of different shapes. Or this one, this artist has a fun name, Maurice Prendergast. This one, instead of the dark gloomy rain, this artist focused on the colorful um, colors of the umbrellas. All right, so we talked about how God's creation is part of that is his rain. In Job 5.10, it says, he gives rain on the earth and sends waters on the fields. All right, so here is one of my favorite rain paintings of all time. It is by Gustav Kaibot. Can you guys say that? Gustav Kaibot. He's French, and he painted this painting in Paris. This is a Paris street and everyone has an umbrella. Everyone was wearing their very best clothes, the latest fashions of the day. This painting is enormous. So I'm gonna get out of my presentation here for a second. And we are going to take a look of the painting in real life. So here it is in one of my favorite places in the world. It's called the Art Institute of Chicago. So if you've ever been to Chicago, the painting actually is there. And look, it's here hanging on the wall in this big room. And if I was standing right here, I wish I had a picture to show you. I My head would probably come right about there. And it's a room filled with lots of smaller paintings by other famous artists Sorry, am I making you sick? Woo! And you come up this amazing staircase into this room. And the first thing you see as you come up the staircase and you walk into the room is this rainy day painting by Gustav Kaibat. There it is. So this painting is in Chicago and I was looking and looking to see if I had a picture of me or someone I knew standing next to it. But the closest I could come to is this. This is the next room over in the museum. These are my nieces, Alethea and Hattie, many, many years ago. Alethea is now in fifth grade, but right now I think she was probably in kindergarten or preschool. So you can see 
This painting is about the same size. It's enormous. So look at the all the different umbrellas. We are going to make an umbrella <clears throat> artwork as well. So remember our learning targets, that we can fold paper into an umbrella shape and that we can create a rain scene. So I'm excited to see what everybody's rain scene looks like. I will tell you, this is kind of what I based mine off of. Any guesses who that is? It's not a niece. This, this is actually me, Miss Christ, when I was probably in kindergarten. So I looked at this picture when I was drawing my umbrella. Okay, so here is what you need for this week. I've got my markers here, but again, like always, you can use whatever you have, colored pencils, crayons, even paint if you want. I've got a pencil, an eraser, you're either going to need some glue or some tape. Either will work. And then for this project, you are going to need two pieces of paper. All right. So if you want to go ahead and pause and go collect those things. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to first draw a person. Your person can look however you want. I just based my person off of myself when I was little. Um, so I looked at that picture and drew what I saw, but you could have your person. It could be you standing, looking toward the other direction. They could be standing on the side, looking that way, but I'm just going to draw the same, the same, um, person this time. So I just kind of looked did a big circle for the head because I had that hood. But really, my umbrella is going to cover up my head. So I just put a circle there. I didn't even have to, but you can if you want. Then my arm kind of comes down here. I've got a big baggy rain jacket on. So... got these big folded sleeves. That's where my hand is going to come out. That's my hand holding the umbrella. Okay. Here's my hood on the other side. My other arm. big cuff. So I've got a rectangle there. Draw that part of my hand. Just drawing another rectangle. And my umbrella. And I'm just going to add my coat. Kind of hangs down. There are buttons. I have some big flowy pants. I guess they were in style back then. And then I have some boots. I kind of ran out of room. On my other one, I have myself standing in a puddle. Can barely see my boots. Okay, so if ever I am just going to color it with marker, um, I like to outline it. So I've got my marker here. I'm going ahead and outlining. I have this checker pattern here. Oops, I kind of need 
I was gonna add some details to my hand, but I need a smaller marker for that. It's my umbrella. I'll go ahead and do my hood, but I'm not gonna add the details of my face. I don't know what these crazy pants are. And my boots. Okay, so you see how I have a bunch of pencil marks? I'm just gonna go ahead and erase that. My niece Hattie wanted me to have an eraser party. So everyone have an eraser party. Oops, I should have let my marker dry a little bit more before my eraser party. Eraser party. Okay. So once you're done with your eraser party, you can go ahead and color your person however you want. And then the next thing I'm gonna show you is folding your umbrella. So, you are going to need another piece of paper, just like this. You are going to have it the long way. And we are going to do some folding. So I'm gonna set this aside for a minute. I'm gonna fold it up this way all the way across. And then I'm gonna flip it over and fold it down this way. About the same amount each time. So if you've ever folded a fan like this, you probably know exactly what to do. I'm just gonna keep flipping it and folding. Flipping it and folding. Sometimes people, instead of flipping it, they just keep rolling it like this, and that's not gonna work. We don't want any rolling. rolling. We want folding. This is called an accordion fold. Fold and flip. Fold and flip. Fold and flip until it is all folded, just like that. Yep. All right, now this is going to be your umbrella. So what you wanna do with this paper, now that it's all folded, is maybe add some patterns or decoration, color it somehow. Maybe you could color the different stripes. For this one, I just did polka dots. So I'll let you guys figure out how you want to decorate your umbrella. Okay, so I hope you guys all have different kinds of patterns and designs all over your umbrella. You're going to fold it back up, making sure it follows those folds. And you're gonna pinch it together, almost like a bow tie or a bow. And you're gonna to try to find the middle and fold it just like that. Then you're gonna take a little piece of tape and tape it right here. And there you have your umbrella. It's ready to go, just like this one is. back. Whoops. Crashing artwork. Okay, so it's ready. You could either take some tape or some glue. I have some tape on this already. Oops. And stick it on your paper. I then took a marker and added some rain. I didn't have a whole lot of room, so you could have some fun with adding raindrops 
to your art.